Greetings traders and welcome back to another In-Depth with Chris episode. In today's discussion, we will be covering the trailing drawdown. This is a crucial piece of information to be aware of, especially if you plan on trading here at earn -to trade as it is one of our integral rules that allows us to control risk and impose good trading habits amongst our traders. So stay tuned, pay attention, and take some notes if you feel you need to. But before we go any further, please go ahead and click that like and subscribe button down below so I can keep coming out with these videos for you guys but without further ado let's get going A trailing drawdown account calculation is a variation of the trading drawdown strategy. In a similar fashion to a stop loss limit, it allows traders and those that are funding the account to limit their financial exposure. A trailing drawdown limit will only move higher to a limit as the value of your investments increase, banked and open positions, thereby continuously protecting your capital. There are a number of factors to consider when it comes to a trailing drawdown which can offer a degree of flexibility to traders. The best way to describe a trailing drawdown is to give an example of our trader's test here at earn to trade the Gauntlet Mini. This provides participants the opportunity to show their skills in intraday trading and secure a third-party funded proprietary trading account. It is very important to work under the same conditions as live intraday traders, mimicking where possible the same pressures that they would be imposing. One of these pressures is a trailing drawdown, which is especially important in those early days. As you can see from this table, each virtual account available with the Gauntlet Mini has a different starting balance. There is also a different trailing drawdown per account which relates to the initial virtual capital figure. So for example, if you were to run the Gauntlet Mini 25,000 challenge on the left, your maximum drawdown would start at 23 500. If your account falls to this level, then your virtual positions would automatically be liquidated and the trading account closed. In simple terms, a trailing drawdown is the level at which your capital, virtual, or real is effectively protected. The same trailing drawdown calculations are based on a percentage of the starting capital while others, as above, are quoted in dollars. In one example, a trailing drawdown for the $25,000 account is 6%, although this falls to, say, 3% for the $150,000 account over here on the right. The real value of a trailing drawdown shines brightest when your open and bank positions begin to show profit and you begin to work your way away from the maximum limitation that the drawdown will rise to during the stages of account growth at earn to trade So we know how the initial trailing drawdown is calculated in relation to our starting capital. Now as we begin trading, this is where the fun begins. In this instance, we are not taking into account intraday highs, including open and closed positions, but we will cover that later. This table here shows how a trailing drawdown will work in practice, taking into account trading profits and losses. As you can see, prior to trade number one, the account balance is $25,000, which equates to a trailing drawdown of $23,500. $500. It is more important to note though that a trailing drawdown will always move up and it will never move down. And it will always move up unless there is a limitation like we have here at earn to trade where once the trailing drawdown reaches the starting capital, the trailing drawdown rises no more. In our example here, after the first trade, the account balance increased $500 to $25,500. A trailing drawdown will also increase in this case to $24,000. It has risen $500. The second trade is profitable, increasing the account balance to $26,000. And a trailing drawdown has now increased to $24,500. The third is a profit of, say, $1,000, bringing us to $27,000. But a trailing drawdown only increases by 500 to 25,000 because that is the initial starting balance. And this helps illustrate exactly how a trailing drawdown can continue to rise up until a limit, just like we have at Earn to Trade. 
When we look further down the table, we can see that the account balance fell to $25,000 after the eighth trade. This was the same as the trailing drawdown at the time. Therefore, all positions would have been liquidated and the account closed, but on the flip side of the coin, if you were to instantly bank a $20,000 profit, our account balance would be $45,000, which means our trailing drawdown would only still be at that $25,000 mark, which gives us a very wide room of trading account value to work with before we ever even consider or anticipate our account being closed automatically due to that trailing drawdown limitation. So the idea is to gain the profits and let the trailing drawdown get pegged at the original starting account balance. On the subject of intraday and closing account balances, the use of intraday valuations is another deterrent for those tempted to take potentially high risks, volatile positions. Because for if example, you had a $25,000 account balance and a $23,500 trailing drawdown, this would leave scope for volatility just less than, say, $1,500. If a volatile asset took the account balance, the intraday balance there, up to, say, $27,000, this would prompt a recalculation of the trailing balance to the maximum $25,000 drawdown. If there was a bout of profit taken and the account balance fell to, say, $25,000, all positions would be liquidated and the account would be closed, and this just would not be ideal. Even though the start and end day balances were the same, the intraday volatility prompted drastic action. It is important to appreciate a trailing drawdown prior to trading and build our investment strategy around this. In trading, you will find that virtual and proprietary trading accounts will have levels of maximum exposure per trade to discourage high-risk trades. The following table that we can see here gives us an idea of how our account balance could be impacted with a maximum 2% risk per trade against a maximum 10% risk per trade. If we focus on the account balance on the left, the risk is 2% per trade calculation, and we can see that the initial trading loss is $500. After the account balance reduces, the loss per trade also falls, and it is not until after trade number three that the account balance falls anywhere near that $23,500 trailing drawdown. Remember, this is the initial trailing drawdown calculation on the starting balance. As the account balance has continuously fallen from day one, a trailing drawdown figure remains static and it can only increase. If we focus on the account balance over here with the 10% risk per trade, as the first trading losses became larger, the $23,500 trailing drawdown limit would have been hit intraday with the first trade. And as a consequence, all positions would have been liquidated and the account would have been closed. And as such, paying attention to your risk ratios and diversification is extremely key to making sure we avoid the trailing drawdown. The trailing drawdown rule is most definitely not just a rule to annoy traders. A trailing drawdown is a means of protecting capital, especially in the early days, when it may be tempting to take undue risks. If we look at this table, this perfectly illustrates the impact of a range of capital losses and the appreciation required to get back to break even. In this instance, we can assume that there was no trailing drawdown to trigger. If we saw a 50% reduction in our trading account balance from 25,000, we would be left with just 12,500. So while the fall was 50%, in order to return back to break even at $25,000, our account balance would need to double, which means we need to increase by 100% to regain 50% of losses. If our account balance fell by 90% down here on the bottom, then it would need to increase by 900% just to return to break even. This perfectly illustrates the important role that a trailing drawdown has in making sure we're finding a way to limit trading losses. This is a very valuable tool for traders to understand whether they're looking to work at a proprietary trading firm or just for their personal trading. In summary, the trailing drawdown is definitely something to understand well, and it's not that complicated, so it shouldn't be that hard to understand now that we've gone through it. It's a very important aspect to fully understand due to the fact that if you're here and you're prepared to take your gauntlet or gauntlet mini trading exam, you need to know it because it is one of the trading rules and with good reason. And if you're here watching this video and you aren't planning on taking the gauntlet mini, well, make sure you understand the value in the trailing drawdown, and I strongly encourage 
making a hypothetical trailing drawdown with your personal account just to see how you like the risk management that comes along with using a trailing drawdown. A way that we can do that is if we have a trading account, we can go ahead and say, all right, my maximum trailing drawdown is going to be, say, $1,000. You can begin your trading day with the $1,000 magical limitation that you've allowed yourself. And if your positions ever swing below $1,000 from the highest point that they've achieved, achieved, you're done for the day. This is a very easy way to go ahead and manage unnecessary risk. And most traders, their biggest limiting factor is their risk management practices and not their knowledge of market conditions or what's going to happen in the market. It's risk management that separates a poor trader from a profitable trader. I thank you guys for joining me as always. This has been a pleasure. I encourage you to check out some trailing drawdown practice principles and use them yourself. But until next time, folks, happy hunting, happy trading. I'll see you soon.